30 second answer. Oh. Okay, recording started. All set. Okay, it's 7.05 p.m. March 21st, 2023 in City Hall, 140 Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. Time to call the City of Torrington Inland Wetlands Commission to order. Serving on the commission this evening are members Emily Jury, Joe Paganini, Carl Hunter, myself, Jay Bate. Also present is Nate Nardi Cyrus, Inland Wetlands Enforcement Officer and Assistant City Planner. I mean, Adrian. Oh, and Adrian Barbie just arrived also. I have to need a copy. I yep. got one. Okay. Right okay, next on the agenda is the minutes for approval for the January 24th, 2023 meeting. I have a motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as they are. Okay. I have a second. I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Emily, you said aye? Yes. Okay. Next, old business none. New business applicant Eric Bayes and Alexis White. Location 435 Notting Hill Gate, activity erect fence within regulated area. Uh, and I can give a little bit of background um, before we hear from Alexis, but so this arose from a kind of combined zoning and wetlands enforcement action. Um, I was doing inspections up, up in that area and noted that there was uh, some uh, animal coops turned out to be rabbit hutches um, and some fencing and uh, some you know minor fill material in a mapped wetland for that subdivision up there. Um, so I sent a notice um, immediately. Um, these folks got back to me, um, Eric Theus, and um, we walked the site. Um, they agreed to remove the, the hutches, move them out of the wetland. Those are out of the wetland at this point. Um, the only thing remains is the beginning of a, a split rail fence that started to be erected. Um, and so they requested to be able to submit a permit application to be able to uh, keep that fence in the uh, within the map wetland area. Mm -hmm. And I can share my screen and I'll just put their application up um, for everyone to see. You can see here, this is an older aerial photo. It's from 2016 mm -hmm. prior to them acquiring the property. But right now there's a fence that runs down here. There's this kind of small area that was filled many years ago. That's a lawn area now mm -hmm. um, that you know they're requesting to be able to leave and not restore since it predated them even purchasing mm -hmm. the property and probably was done for the road. Um, and then the fence kind of would extend around around here and I'll let um, Alexis if yeah. Yeah, just come up to the, the microphone and identify yourself for the record. Good evening. I'm Alexis Fleet, the homeowner of 435 Notting Hill Gate. Okay. Um, this fence is really just for our four dogs as a boundary and a safety fence for our daughter just so that we know Nobody's just walking in through the backyard. We have pretty active neighbors. Uh, it does help safety wise so that the dogs don't wander off of our property. Um, it, it doesn't affect or change the land whatsoever. Um, it'll remain however wetland it normally is. Now between your uh, that map where the wetlands is, is that all woods or is that just lawn now? It is still woods. Uh, there's leafage that we rake, but an undergrowth that grows up isn't necessarily lawn. However, it's starting to begin to turn lawn. So it's just basically scrubby? Yeah, yeah. it's like uh, some rose, old rose bush, thorn, briar patch kind of stuff that grows in. Yeah. And I don't have the application 
I guess the full maps weren't included with their application, but that's just a cleaner aerial shot. It's really just forest. Okay. How, how many feet long is it? I think I put on the application, or no, I think I put it in my memo. Uh, 120 feet approximately. Mm -hmm. And it's wooden? Yes. That's a good condition. They just put it up, so uh, yeah. It it's great. very healthy, yes. <laughs> Fresh wood. I paused the painting of it because I didn't want to paint it and then have it taken down. <laughs> so I'll share with everyone. I took I took a picture today. This will be part of the record of the file, but this is you know, they, like I said, they removed the um, the rabbit hutches out of there. It's really mm -hmm. just um, natural at this point. Mm -hmm. Who did the labor? <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. I like physical work. Thank you. And in case there's questions, maple syruping is an as of right activity. Um, <laughs> yeah, we end. just did that. Yesterday. Yeah, I saw those bags. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have any problem with it myself. So procedurally, we would have to accept formally make a motion to formally accept the application yeah. today, and then we'd have to make a determination of significance whether or not this requires a public hearing. Um, and so, okay. yeah. Okay, I'll make the uh, motion of acceptance. Yeah. Wait, Christine just got here, so let's just. Hey, hey, Christine. Christine Altman just arrived. Oh, yeah. How are you? It's at about seven oh nine. Might as well uh, give Christine the, the quick update on this Thank application. Thank you. Would you, would you like me to just do it? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, yeah, okay. Quick. So this is just um, an application um, to put in a split rail fence through the wetland and upland review areas on these mapped wetlands for, this is up um, by, Wim, that's Wimbledon Gate and Notting Hill Gate, kind okay. of the intersection of those roads there. Yeah. Um, there was a, this was part of a zoning enforcement action um, and the applicants removed rabbit hutches that were a part of that and moved them out of the wetland. So right now it's currently just the beginnings of a split rail fence. Okay. Um, I'll show you the picture of it. Got it. Have a of some information. I guess split rail fence is already in, right? Is it all in or? Not all of it. We did pause it for the season. And then when we realized we had made a mistake, we weren't going to continue, obviously. <laughs> Are they going to put any of those uh, medallions on it? Notice saying it's a wetlands or? Yeah, that'll be my recommendation for the next meeting would be to, um, you know, we, we have a, a template for kind of, um, yeah, metal medallions you can nail to trees. I oh, think cool. my only concern is that after you uh, move on from the site that someone converts it to lawn, cuts the trees, and then over time it just stops being a wetland. So this would help kind of notify future owners, but usually it's done on these subdivisions. It wasn't in this case in kind of a metal visually recessive. You don't really see it unless you're looking for it type of way. Gotcha. So that'll be, you know, I'm that'll be my recommendation for the next meeting when the approval happens to condition it on putting those up. Sure, I would not be opposed to that. <laughs> Any, questions? Hmm? Any questions? No. Okay, can I have a motion to accept? Can I look at your yeah. agenda here? So this is January, this is January. Okay. Yep. All right, I move that we accept the application for Eric Dice and Alexa White, 435 Notting Hill Gate, erect fence within a regulated area. It's not a significant activity. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank aye. you. Emily says yes. Thanks yeah, I think there might be a delay. I said aye. Okay, great. Okay, motion carries. Okay, you're all set to the next. Thank you, such kind people. <laughs> Okay, next. Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to uh, let her know. So we'll send you an email with the, the link for next month's meeting so that, you know, you can attend for that decision as well. But we'll follow up with that. Yeah. 
Great. Okay, next is staff report. <coughs> Enforcement report, 137 Babbling Brook Road. Okay, so yeah, this is a, uh, an, started as an, a zoning enforcement action um, for an illegal barn structure that was con, uh, erected. And then, you know, on, a, on investigation, we noted that the, um, there was a perennial stream that was um, buried and piped about 200 feet. Um, and then the area around it drained to create a lawn without a permit. <clears throat> so we're still following up with with them on that, this happened quite a while ago. The applicant has been cooperative, but their consultant, who's George Logan, who's done a lot of work for this commission before, has been in the process of moving their um, their headquarters, and so they've been really slow on this. But I spoke with him last month. He understands. I think he the, the landowner didn't fully communicate with him, kind of what we wanted out of an application, and so I talked directly to um, to their restoration consultant, and he you know, understands what he has to do and said he would get us a, an application by not this meeting, but the next meeting. Okay. So it seemed reasonable to me. Okay. Um, 131 Woodbine Street. This was, um, this is kind of by the Winchester on Wolcott, mm -hmm. uh, like at the intersection of Wolcott Ave and uh, Wolcott Street and Woodbine Street. It's right along the Naugatuck River there. Someone um, constructed a shed um, essentially on city property, but also within the regulated area and had debris kind of overflowing from that shed area down into the Naugatuck River. Um, so, you know, I followed up with them. They received a permit to move the shed and clean up all that debris by uh, June 1st, I think I gave them um, to get that done. So that's in pro progress. Um, 3226, uh, 3222 Torringford Street. This is um, the, that two, two lots that we did, um, George Newjame, um, forget when mm -hmm. that was, maybe October. Yeah. Um, they were building a single family home on one of the lots and the other one just kind of grading and preparing it for a, a, a lot. Um, upon investigation for the single family home permit, it looked like there was wetlands on their access way. And lo and behold, after they got a survey, there it was a, a flag lot, two flag lots. So right where the flags went in, there was wetlands completely blocking their entrance to the, to the lots. Um, so they really had to, you know, develop or, you know, fill some of those wetlands to gain access to build their single family home there. Um, so they did that, got the permit, you know, had significant restoration activity that they had to do to compensate for what they were filling. Um, so I was out there, noticed that they'd begin logging the site, which they had all their permits for. Um, but the folks that they had hired were dragging all of their logs through the wetland this kind of wet spring and just absolutely ripping the wetland apart um so i was able to get them to demarcate it and stop doing any action and then did a minor permit update to make sure that their restoration consultant restores that section as well and in addition to the um they were going to create mitigation wetlands adjacent to it. So they're going to have to do a lot more work to kind of fix what they mm -hmm. what they ripped up in that process. Mm -hmm. Would have probably been fine if it was a cold winter and they had yeah. snow on the ground, but mm -hmm. uh, they were like sinking the, their tractor like up to the hubs in the wetland oh, yeah. <laughs> in one part where I had to go out every day and just be like, stop, stop working. Um. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that they, they were able to cordon, cordon it off and they'll be in that area this summer. Um, yeah, so that's all I had for my enforcement report. Okay, and the agent determinations? Uh, 121 Woodbine Street, that was the yeah. relocation of the shed in the Upland Review area. 232 Clug Hill Road, so Clug Hill Road, that was our application for the new campground there. Um, they, uh, in the Upland Review area, they were gonna convert a, a former farm road into a temporary construction access. Um, so, you know, we, we gave him or I gave them the agent determination permit for that. It just they had to put a tracking pad in and silt fencing and, you know, they were pretty close to the wetland, but it was an existing road and it wasn't in the wetland. So, um, granted that permit. Yeah, that's, that, that was all the agent determinations. Going for the rest? Oh, no, that's, uh, that's one minor. Minor. So there's so many minor updates because we, we missed the last, uh, we had our last meeting was right. canceled, so. Um, 232 Clug Hill Road, that's an interesting, so that 
that is not the access road. This is the actual entry mm -hmm. up to it. Um, there was some considerable, so the backstory on that was that received its wetlands, um, its permit, I believe it was in December, sometime mm -hmm. around then. Mm -hmm. um, it went to planning and zoning. The city engineer had a problem with the grade of the road. And so they had to, there was a significant back and forth where they had to kind of adjust the grade of the road. And so there needed to be a modification of the wetland permit. We considered it to be minor and not have to go back to the commission because they stayed within the footprint. They just adjusted the grade along the road. So mm -hmm. there was no real changes to uh, any of the outfalls that touched the wetlands. It was all just within that area. Um, 2315 Troingford West. This was a single family home construction that was approved in March of last year. I think it was right before I had started or April maybe it was approved. Um, they started their work on the single family home, started clearing the site. Uh, the family, they're, they're both loggers. Um, so I think they were doing some of the work themselves. The installation of the culvert was done very poorly and it was perched so high that the inlet and the outlet, it was perched. So it wasn't <laughs> passing water through <laughs> the culvert. That's um, a yeah, so they really had to redesign that whole so they brought it back to their engineer and the engineer actually suggested extending the culvert because it was, they were also really, once they, you see it on the ground, it was really scrunched in there. Um, so that, you know, we considered that to be a minor, a minor modification to their permit just to extend that pipe so that they could reset it and get their soil and erosion control measures in and uh, be ready for the construction season. So yeah, that was that. Next notifications. Um, the first one, we were hinting at this prior to the meeting, but uh, a, no, a no, notification of an environmental in intervention for the solar um, property that's up off of um, Wimbledon Gate, I guess. It's Notting Hill. Uh, no, it was Wimbledon Gate, yeah, pretty much behind there. Um, that had come to the commission early last year, but because it was a large enough solar project, um, didn't, uh, it, it went right to the Connecticut Siting Council and there was no um, local decision making regarding that. Wetlands was reviewed by the Connecticut DEEP um, for, the, for their wetlands uh, permitting for that. Um, so, you know, it's my understanding that that process was moving forward um, right before the conclusion of DEEP's environmental review and environmental intervention took place. This is where um, this is a process in which uh, any local resident um, can, you know, file for this status as an intervener and, and participate more fully in the review process of certain projects. Mm -hmm. So they, so this is just a notice to us that, that this person is getting involved in the siting council process. Mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with us. We are just the, the local land use We're commission. Bystanders. Yeah. Bystanders. Exactly, exactly. But we do have to be notified of it. And so okay. we received many letters. Conservation Commission also received letters, uh, a letter for that that we can you know discuss at our next meeting. So. Um, and then the final thing, <laughs> Torrington uh, Water Company sent us a notice of dam maintenance. So that is a, an exempted activity mm -hmm. where they don't require any approval for us, but they're doing work up at the Reuben Hart Reservoir there. They're going to be drilling cores into the dam itself um, to assess its stability and then a little bit of downstream work to just um, whatever structural uh, dam engineers do to make sure that the dams don't fail. Um, so, you know, I signed off on it that we would not require a permit mm -hmm. and um, they sent a specific deep um, form that we had to sign off on. So uh, in the past for these types of things, I've made folks come before the commission for a jurisdictional determination. Um, but in this case, it seemed like it was, you know, DEEP was already signing off on it as jurisdiction. So I just went with that. <laughs> um, if you, in the future, if you'd like me to bring it to the commission, no matter what, I can do that. But, uh, um, you know, I'll leave it up to you at whether or not you want me to, these, these damn, um, I like to be known, told about them, but I don't know if we need to. I mean, we don't have yeah, the I feel the same way. Yeah, I feel the same structure. way. Yeah. Yeah. So, for new members on the board, a jurisdictional determination is just 
uh, an applicant or someone who's doing work on their property comes here, they don't have to fill out an application. They present what they're going to do, and then the commission rules on whether or not they fall under the jurisdiction of inland wetlands and require a permit. So it's kind of a pre-permitting process. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, agricultural activities fall into that bucket, forestry activities, water company and utility activities, those types of things. There's a whole laundry list mm -hmm. um, in state statute on Which that. Which dam is this one? One the main one that holds all the water? It's the one that's yeah, it's the one at the top of North Fork Road. On the left. Yeah, yeah, it's that one. Yeah, the other one is what we want to Yeah, yes, uh, uh, be nice if that one come around. That's all I have. Okay, I guess uh, we need a motion for adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay.